talk a little bit about the myth in recovery that people think, yeah, oh, she's she's recovered mm -hmm. or she's gone through recovery, mm -hmm. and of, about why this race is fifty miles to freedom and about the journey of recovery and mm -hmm. your experiences and how do we tie all this together with what we're doing here? Yeah, so again, it, it's a journey. Um, it's long, it's hard, it's painful. There's good days, there's bad days, and it requires community. I mean, if we are able to do the work we do here at Divas because we, in our inner circle of who our arms are linked to, at least 10 agencies, mm -hmm. you know, maybe she needs the Cottage Sexual Assault Center, maybe she needs Project Safe for Domestic Violence, maybe she needs Advantage Behavioral Health because she can't afford, um, you know, psychiatric medication or treatment. You know, there's just so many agencies that we're partnered with. So it's almost like we're passing the baton in this mm -hmm. race. You know, you run as hard and as long as you can. And then when your legs are tired, then this this particular agency, do, through the seasons mm -hmm. of her life, you mm -hmm. know, as she ebbs and flows with what's going on with her. You know, my, my daughter, you know, uh, lack of job stability, then she would get a job, and then lack of housing, then we finally got the housing, then vehicle that's not running, then we partnered to get lift rides. You know, there's mm -hmm. just uh, so many bends and curves mm -hmm. along the way, and it's really about the connection. Will we be there still connected with this girl as the trauma continues to pop up in her life, as it mm -hmm. will, um, as her need to um, soothe her trauma, how, whatever that looks like, you know, hopefully it's not drugs, but if it is, well, can we get her to a support group and to a meeting that might help her get that under control? And then it might be a toxic relationship, you know, with the intimate partner. Well, yeah. she wear herself out in that, but let's keep loving her. Yeah. Um, let them both, you know, depending on who it is, y'all come here, here's a meeting mm -hmm. about healthy relationships, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it's long and it's on a continuum and there's some mile markers where we get to celebrate, mm, you know, yes. and then there's some times where we get to cry mm -hmm. together, but it's just all about staying connected mm -hmm. so that the girls and the women are not just out there alone where really, really bad things happen mm -hmm. in that space. Yeah. And you guys, I think do that so well just with, the peer-to-peer -peer calls every week and job mm -hmm. training and lift right. I mean, yeah. Make up if they have to get ready for something. I just, I feel like there's not a way that you don't care mm. for these women. So. Mm -hmm. Well, she's me, <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, she's me when I think uh, about all the ways in which I've needed mm -hmm. community and the things that have stood out, you know, she, she's me. And now, you know, uh, some stability, is happening for my daughter and my daughter is really passionate around the justice piece. She wrote her own victim statement that she spoke to the judge mm -hmm. in the in that courtroom with the family of traffickers wow. sitting right there within uh, spitball distance is what I wow. like to call it. Um, so she's passionate about that and want the message for young girls to, to know, you mm -hmm. know, like in these rural areas and smaller towns like Athens, these conversations aren't going on. These girls are more naive. They aren't hip to mm -hmm. the game and to the life. And so my daughter, um, I'm, we're dreaming with her what, yeah. you know, which direction she wants to go to be that current relevant voice in her, her age group. Well, I can only imagine mm -hmm. <laughs> with coming just with your speaking and your power and how you've empowered so many women. So thank you for your work. Thank you. <laughs>